He will reveal the truth to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to learn to become dependent on God. We must have childlike faith and dependency on the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're not going to know the truth about these places. You're not going to be able to have discernment on what is before you if you don't first get to the basics, which is getting in the word of God, reading the Bible page by page, listening to it page by page. If you don't like to read and that's not your thing, there's still audio. You can listen to it. If you think listening to like maybe Alexander Scurby's reading is just too monotone for you, they have the dramatized Bible. And it's, I prefer King James. I just do. But because sometimes I find other versions, they change stuff. But okay, you know, to each his own. But I would say just kind of have that for reference if you can. But you can listen to it. You can dedicate a day to listen to one chapter a day. Because you need to know the truth. If you don't know what's in the word of God, you're going to be fooled. You're going to find that you're going to be following these doctrines and the things that people are telling you. And you're going to be finding this, you know, they have these new movements and they're going along with all these different things. And they're telling you what they feel and what they're trying to do to safeguard themselves and not what comes from the spirit of God. Guys, eternity is too long. Hell is too long. It's forever to be wrong and to be just putting your salvation in the hands of God. Of you man. don't want to miss out on, on everlasting life. You don't want to miss out on the joys unspeakable that's in glory with the Lord. You don't want to miss out on your well done. You don't want to lose your crown because you sat down here listening to carnal people and people who turn the words following after religious villains. People that are evil, people that come up with diabolical plots. Yes, this is going on in the body of Christ. Yes, these are people that, you know, one of the definitions that says a story or play that opposes a character in a story or a play that opposes the hero. That is what the villain is. A character in a story or a play that opposes the hero. But in this case, this is a man or woman that say that they're following God, but they're opposing a lot of the laws of God. When they're telling you this applies, but this doesn't apply, when they want to mince up the Bible and split up the Bible and want you to ignore certain parts of the word of God, guys, when people are telling you just to pay attention to this part of the Bible and ignore that, then that is deception. And so these, these individuals come and they oppose the word of God. Jesus did not come and say the old, old things are gone. The, the, the ways of my father, it don't no longer exists. The words that my, the Lord the way the ways of God and the ways of old that's no longer necessary the commandments of God are no longer relevant the commandments of the old testament are no longer relevant he did not say that he says I and my father are one. The Lord said in, in John 17, Father, I finished the work. Glorify your son. Okay, let me let me get it right for y'all guys. I'm sorry. I know this video is long, but just watch it in increments. It says Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. Jesus came to glorify the Father. Jesus came to do what the Lord told him to do. He did not deviate from the things and the commandments of old. It says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he shall give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay? Whew. Verse 4 of John 17 says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the, earth, before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them unto me, that they may keep thy word. He is here for us to keep the words of the Father. The same commandments, the same precepts, the same standards that God had in the old days before he sent his son Jesus. I'm here to tell you, Jesus never came to deviate from it. So when you have religious villains that are trying to go against the Father, the Lord Jesus came to do the work of the Father. He says, I have finished the work. I have done what you have called me to do. He did not come to 
oppose him, but religious villains are the ones that come to oppose the hero, that comes to oppose the son of God, that comes that comes to oppose the almighty God by trying to give you different narratives to the word of God. That's trying to tell you that you can sin and still enter into the holies of holy. These are people that they dibble and they dabble and they go back and forth. And so to kind of keep themselves from being, from feeling uh, conviction, if they feel it anymore, because some of these religious, de these religious villains have, they don't feel any convictions anymore. Their heart is seared with a hot iron. So I'm here to tell you right now that when you find them telling you something that opposes the word of God, this is the villain that's opposing the hero who is our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're telling you laws and telling you things that is different. They come to oppose him while still posing as if they are for him. These are the characteristics of religious villains. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. You will be fooled if you're not in the word of God, if you don't study the word, if you don't sit and read it and see the truth for yourself, if you don't believe what the Lord reveals to you when he opens up your eyes, if you don't do the things and the commandments, if you don't move when he tells you to move, if you don't remove yourself from places when he tells you to remove uh, your, 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 yourself from places, if you don't step out and do the things that he's told you to do, despite what that religious villain is telling you, oh, it's not your time. If it's not your calling yet. The Lord did not reveal it to me. No, he didn't reveal it to you because it ain't none of your business. It's your business. The Lord revealed it to you because it is your blueprint. There are certain things that they are not going to know. And so, guys, you need to just be able to discern and to know. Because you don't want to be a person that you think in every person, every pastor is evil. They're not all evil. Not all prophets are false prophets, okay? Not all churches are evil churches. But you must have a discernment and you must have your own personal relationship with the Lord. That even when you are in a place where the pastor is about the Lord and he is worshiping the Lord, you're still listening to the voice of God for yourself. Remember when Samuel heard the voice of God, he heard it. It was not Eli that heard his voice, regardless of him being under the care of Eli for all those years from he was a baby, from he was about, I think, two. He was very young when he was he uh, he went to be with Eli to serve the Lord. But the Lord did not speak to Samuel. He spoke to he did not, I'm sorry, the Lord did not speak to Eli, he spoke to Samuel. So even when you're in a church, even when you're in a ministry where they do love the Lord, because they do exist, you still need to be hearing, you need to be cognizant of the voice of God and what he tells you. You should never allow your pastor, even if he or she is a great person, to override what God tells you. Because the Lord may have you there for a season, but he may say it's time for you to launch out. But sometimes some pastors, even in their their they're trying to, they're, they, they're well-meaning. They don't want you to leave. Sometimes they just grown attached to you. Sometimes they really just love you as a son or a daughter. They love your family. Sometimes you love being there. You've been there for so long. You feel safe there. But there are things the Lord is telling you to launch out to do. You have to remember there are souls in the balance. There are people out there that needs to hear your testimony. You've been here for a while. He may keep you here for a bit. But all pastors should be in the habit of being willing to hear when you come to that pastor and you say, hey, pastor, it's time for me to go. The Lord has placed it in my heart. That pastor shouldn't be trying to stop you. The pastor should be willing to hear what you have to say, pray for you, seek the Lord with you, but he's not there to override what God says. God is not going to give your pastor the final answer regarding you. You must realize that you and I, at the end, we're going to stand before the Lord to give an account for what we've done. How is it possible that the Lord put such, uh, he, he put such um, trust in us and he expects us to be accountable to such a degree that you will stand before him alone to give an account? So therefore, you and I cannot afford to put our salvation in the hand of any one person. It does not mean that you cannot hear what they have to say. It does not mean that you cannot, you know, sharpen one another. But that's the thing. Iron sharpens iron. It's not just this person has all the answers. You both can sharpen one another, but you should never deviate from the Lord. The Lord is exposing these religious villains to you.
They're being exposed in the media. The world is exposing them. They're being exposed when they go and sit on talk shows and sit on public settings and they are hemming and hawing when these people ask them direct questions about what the Lord says about this lifestyle. What is, the, what is your opinion about sin? What is your opinion about sex before marriage? They're up there going, well, you know, you know, you don't need to say you know. What's the scripture? What does the Bible say? But these individuals are going to recognize the religious villains because they are trying to keep their, their, their endorsements and their sponsorships. They don't want to lose their memberships. A lot of people's living all types of lifestyle, living all types of way that is putting big money in their bank account and that's supporting them, that bought them cars, that paid for their, their next, that paid for their all expense based trips and they don't want to upset them. Guys, I'm going to put it like this. There are people that, that there are people in the church that say that there are men and women of God who don't want to piss the world off. Plain and simple. So they are rather mix messages, be neutral, backpedal, always start off with, you know, of course, yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know. It's not about what, it's none of your opinion. What does the word of God say? It's being exposed. They're being exposed. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. The word of God says, by their fruit, you shall know them. It is your responsibility. It is my responsibility to get get rooted in the word of God, to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit, then you pray and say, Lord, teach me how to know your voice. Stop depending on people with your salvation. You cannot afford it, guys, because even people that mean well can mislead you and you don't want that to happen because you're going to stand before God by yourself and you're not going to be able to tell him who did what because he's going to say, I sent my son who shed his blood for you. I sent the Holy Spirit, the comforter that was always there I spoke to you you had so many years that you lived and this this is what you do you were led astray you heard videos you heard the lighthouse you heard this channel you heard that I spoke to you someone spoke to you you saw my words spring up off the page to tell you to come out from among them to trust in me that the Holy Spirit is your teacher to trust no man to teach you but me and yet and still you didn't do the work and now you stand before for me saying that this person kept you from me well I'm here to tell you about to join them depart from me you who practice lawlessness guys do not let that be you the Lord is exposing religious villains that's why there's so many teachings on the narcissist and all these different things the world calls it the narcissist but we know that these are demonic spirits but nevertheless the reason why there's so many things on narcissists is because that spirit is being exposed it's known as the narcissist in the world but it's exposure this behavior is being exposed the world is on it so therefore you're not going to be able to bring the world into the church and think the world can't peak game and see that you are playing games and you are a narcissist but it's not enough for you to just have worldly wisdom and knowledge because what happens is people just get turned off. They just go along and play the game or whatever or leave the church. Well, that's not what the Lord wants you to do. He wants you to trust in him. He wants you to have wisdom that comes from him. He wants you to have discernment. He wants you to be able to turn away and trust in him completely, not in religious villains, guys, but in him so that you can finish the work. Because our life is not just all around messy folks. We don't have time to waste any time with folks who want to play games. You got to cut the cord, move ahead, and put your hands to the plow because there are people that are in the harvest who are ready to accept the Lord, who are ready to do the work. And those are the individuals you focus on. Do not allow religious villains to keep you from entering into everlasting life or cause you to lose your crown.